today I'm going to do a little demo and a tutorial on using the Fishman Triple Play along with uh, the Line 6 Helix, the Boss SY300 and some external synthesizers. Uh, just to give you an idea of what maybe you can use it for for yourself and uh, show you how this stuff works. So let's get started. Alright, so what is the Fishman Triple Play first of all? Fishman Triple Play is basically the next generation of MIDI guitar controllers, uh, virtual guitar. So this is the Fishman Triple Play here and this is the original Roland type design. Okay, and they work similarly in the sense that they both have hexagonal pickups. Uh, hexagonal pickups means that underneath each string there's an individual pickup. So six of them, therefore the word hex. Um, and each one picks up each string individually. And that's the same for both controllers. The main differences between the two, that being from the Roland and from the Triple Play, um, is that the Roland requires a 13-pin connector, so a cable that comes out from here. The Triple Play is completely wireless, so that's really handy. Uh, you don't have to have that extra cable uh, along with your guitar cable. Uh, sometimes you want to set it up that way. Or you don't have to have it plugged directly into a Roland controller, say for example. With the Triple Play, you can plug it into whatever you want. Um, but the Triple Play uses the uh, doggle that comes with it. That's this little uh, device here. Okay. Now I have it hooked up with some dual lock on the back here. And I also have it with a little extension cable. Uh, that's pretty handy. I use the dual lock in order to mount it uh, so I don't lose the thing. Uh, another advantage, I think, with the uh, Triple Play, it seems to track a little bit better than the older uh, Roll-On designs. Uh, I definitely think it does a little bit better uh, with that. It's a little faster and uh, definitely is a, a big deal uh, when you're trying to, uh, you know, get the most out of it. Alright, so this is the Triple Play software that comes uh, with the controller. And what you're going to do is you want to take the, uh, the doggle there. And you want to plug it into the USB. Alright, and we uh, we get the old guitar. And we There's a little button on the top there. And we flip it on. And then we need to select the sound. So we want to go here and open it. And that pulls up this little dialog box. And we get a little flute sound. That loads that up. And one of the cool things about the software is this little display there. Because when you play, it'll show the notes that you're playing. So you see there I'm playing an E chord. Or an A chord. It'll actually show you the chord that you're playing. G chord, and so forth. And an E minor there. This is really great if you want to just bring your laptop with you and, you know, set this up. Run the uh, audio cable from your guitar out to your amp or your modeler or whatever. And it's a pretty simple setup. Uh, there are some downsides to using a laptop. It really just depends on what you want. Uh, one of the downsides is that, you know, it is your laptop. If this is your only computer, it might have some personal information on it. So you might not want to bring that to the gig. Uh, and also sometimes the laptops are a little cumbersome to use. And some of the sounds that you're going to get may, be, may or may not be a little bit limited for what you want to use them for. Uh, it's totally up to you as how in depth that you want to get with it. Uh, but there are some things uh, else that you can do with uh, the Fishman Triple Play, and that's using it uh, externally without the laptop. And that's the way I like to use it, so we're going to give that a try. All right, before I show you how you can set up the triple play with some external synthesizers. wanted to take a moment and give you an idea of what's going on uh, with the MIDI data that is received from uh, the Fishman triple play. And in order to demonstrate that, what you're looking at here 
is this little free program that comes from SoundLib, Sound L I B, and it's called a mini test. And what this represents, these uh, 16 boxes up here, is each 16 MIDI channel and what it receives. So when I hit the uh, guitar, it's going to show all the different channels. So let's say, for example, I just hit all the, the uh, strings on the guitar. And you see it's coming in with all the different data. Now, if you remember, it has the six hexagonal pickups. So what you're seeing here is the high E string to the low E string receiving all the individual data. And on channel 8 here, it sends some global data, uh, such as uh, global volume and things like that. Uh, now, if I clear this out, you can get a better idea. If I hit E string one at a time, starting from the high E, that's the channel 1. And then going to the B string, that's channel 2. And then going to the G string, channel 3. And then going D, channel 4. And then going to channel 5 with the A string. And then going channel uh, 6 with the low E string. So, one of the challenges with MIDI always, I find, is to be able to monitor it and know what is, uh, is being received. It's not something you can hear. It's not something you can actually see, feel, or touch. So uh, I find it very handy to have this little program. Definitely download it. It's a free program. Uh, again, it's uh, called MIDI Test from Sound LIB. Okay, so if you want to use the Fishman Triple Play with uh, external synthesizers, the first thing you're going to need is something that's going to replace the computer to plug your uh, USB toggle in. And that would mean you need a USB host device. Now, I use uh, either one of these two devices here. They're made by iConnectivity. This is the uh, iConnectivity MIDI 4 Plus, and this is the iConnectivity uh, Audio 4. Typically in the studio, I like using the MIDI 4 Plus because it has a lot of uh, routing possibilities. Uh, for live use, I use the Audio. Uh, 4 plus because that has some mixing possibilities uh, that I like to use it. Either one is good and uh, Fishman just came out with their FC1 controller uh, that's also a good host and the next thing you're going to need to use is an external synthesizer. Now here's a couple models uh, this is an older uh, Emu Proteus and this is a new uh, Waldorf Blofeld synthesizer uh, that I've gotten recently. Uh, the key thing when you're looking to buy an external synthesizer to use is it has to have two features. One, it has to be multi temporal In other words, it can play all of at least those uh, six channels that's going to be received from each string. Okay? And it has to be able to uh, set the pitch bend range because you have to set the pitch bend range uh, either globally or per patch to a range of 12 uh, semitones, plus or minus. All right, when I play live, I usually also play uh, keyboards in my gigs. I tend to be the utility guy. I play guitar, uh, keyboards, also saxophone. So the main uh, synthesizer that I like to use uh, with the MIDI guitar is my Roland FA-06. Uh, this is a 16-part multi timbral synthesizer. And uh, it's also pretty easy to program. Uh, for multi timbral use, uh, and that's another reason why I like to uh, put it to use, and it just sounds great. Alright, so let's look at uh, setting this up to work best with the uh, Fishman controller on a multi timbral synthesizer. Uh, again, this is my Roland FA06, but the process would be pretty much the same uh, with any multi timbral uh, sit up, setup. Excuse me. Uh, you're looking here at a patch I created uh, that is some bell sounds. So. Let's dive a little deeper into it and see how it, uh, it's set up. So let's see, let's hit the menu button. Take a look at each individual multi temporal part. So I'll select that. And you'll see here from channel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay, I have the individual bell pads set up. So that way, 
I'll have it on each string individually and it responds to each string individually if you look here you can see that um, going from the highs to the low okay and uh, looks like that E string is not responding as well the low E but I'll get that fixed and you can also do it where you know if you want to have it on different sounds on different strings you can do it that way so just for an example say for example on the D A and low E string I wanted a different sound okay so I can go to say something a little different on that so here I would have again from high E to uh, low E the bell pad on the first uh, three strings so E B G and then if I wanted a different sound on the D A and E string I'll get a different sound uh, you could also do uh, splits uh, where for example you may want to have a different uh, sound above the 12th fret uh, you could do that as well uh, by splitting each individual MIDI channel but uh, to make it a little easier we just want to go through the uh, same uh, sound so we're going to go back to the bell pad for each string okay and you see when I play a chord <laughs> All the strings uh, light up and they all respond on each individual uh, MIDI channel. But you're not done. You got to go over to uh, make sure you're setting the pitch bend range correctly. That way, when you do hammer ons and so forth, uh, it comes through cleanly at the right pitch. Now, uh, the Fishman Triple Play uses a 12 semitone step uh, setting that you want to set it up for. So we can scroll over here. And you'll see here. Okay, the pitch bend range is set to 12 for each one of those six MIDI channels. Okay. Now, you're not just limited to having one sound, as I mentioned before, you can also layer sounds. So what I did here with this uh, other one here, this other patch that I have here, okay, is I took that and actually put two different sounds on the same string. So if I look at the parts again, uh, via the part view, okay, you'll see here that I had the pitch bend range set for 12. And if I go all the way back to the beginning, you'll see that each sound, okay, each MIDI uh, channel, I should say, has two uh, set for one, two different sounds set at one, channel one, two different sounds set, set for channel two. Uh, but they're two of the same patches, so you get a layered effect. So you can get really, really big. It is important to note a couple things, and that not every synthesizer is a full 16-channel, 16 16-part 16 multi-temporal synthesizer. Uh, so that's ideal because that will allow you to get the most ability to layer the most uh, different uh, sounds and patches. And not every synthesizer has the ability to set the pitch bend range. Uh, so you want to make sure that when you're looking to uh, make a purchase uh, of an additional synth that they do that. I just want to mention when using the triple play with external synthesizers, you want to set it up in hardware mode. That way it knows that you're using it for, with the external devices and not with the uh, internal software on your laptop. That's easy to do. All you got to do is to uh, push this little button up here and you turn it on. And you'll see it blinked a couple times. That lets you know it's in hardware mode and ready to go. Alright, so let's take a look and see how we can control all this and get it working as one system. Uh, First, a quick overview of my uh, setup again. Uh, the guitar signal comes into the uh, box over here. It leaves the box out of here, comes into the uh, Sonus volume pedal. Okay, comes out of the Sonus volume pedal into the uh, Boss SY uh, 300, goes through the throughput, 
and then goes into the uh, helix here. Uh, now the options for uh, actually getting the audio uh, to my speakers and monitoring are a couple of different things that I can use. I can use the uh, USB audio uh, for all of the uh, units, that being the um, helix here and the SY300 as well as the synthesizer or typically live I just run audio out uh, into a mixer and then uh, mix them directly into the uh, uh, monitors that I have um, and I do it as a nice stereo mix. Uh, the great thing about Helix uh, and it's the most powerful part about it uh, other than the modeling and the grade of effects is the ability to use it as a MIDI controller. Um, so for each individual patch uh, what I do is I have it set up so it calls up the correct patch for both the uh, Sonus uh, volume pedal uh, as well as for the Boss SY300. Uh, it can also call up uh, patches for your synthesizer uh, for the channels through 1 through 6 uh, if you want to set it up for it that way. Usually I just use the quick dial button on the synthesizer uh, uh, by itself so I don't have to bother setting up the patches on here but you can control it directly from here and you see what I have uh, set up here is I have a, a nice ambient patch that includes uh, both the helix it includes uh, the sonus okay playing a little bit of a tremolo type of effects uh, and it has the boss SY300 playing, you know, some nice, clean, dreamy uh, type of synthesizer effects, as well as a pad, uh, the same pad that you heard earlier uh, on the Roland. And the sound, you know, it's a little bit like this. So what you heard there is the guitar, you heard the uh, Boss SY300, uh, you heard the effect of the Sun and volume pedal, as well as the FA06. Now I could change uh, the tones so that it doesn't have the um, tremolo coming in by hitting the volume and going to patch number 00, zero and you'll see that the tremolo has uh, stopped moving. Okay. Uh, and or I can change the uh, sound of the Boss SY300 uh, by going to from that more ambient patch to more of a lead patch, okay, uh, to get a little bit more oomph out of it. <laughs> So that's a great way to just get a nice, uh, you know, lead sound, but still keep that kind of wishy, uh, washy kind of ambient, uh, cool tone to it. All right, so let's get a closer look at uh, the control center and see how we can set up some things uh, within this patch. So uh, you want to go to uh, this button here and you hit the controller, uh, excuse me, the command center right here. And you'll see this is the command center and these are the... Uh, the instant commands, okay, so this one's lit up here, if we move over to here, okay, you'll see this is sending, when you select the patch, a bank and a program change command on MIDI channel 3, okay, MIDI channel 3 is what I've selected for the Sonus uh, volume pedal, uh, and then I come over to here, okay, on channel 4, which is my SY uh, 300 channel. It's set up to when the program uh, patch comes up, the uh, program preset I should say, uh, number 70, uh, that patch comes up, which is the uh, more kind of dreamy uh, pad type sound. And then I also have down here, okay, that's these foot switch assignments, okay, so um, there is an offset, even though this says 72, it's going to pull up uh, patch number 73 on the SY300. Uh, sometimes there's always an offset on that. 
uh, different uh, uh, synthesizers or in their MIDI devices uh, respond differently to that. Sometimes they're exactly the right number or order or one off. Uh, and then you want to go to here it's showing number 70 or 71 is how it responds on the uh, SY300. So those are, are both on MIDI channel 4 for this one and for this one, this one and this one. Okay. Um, and then when I want to take the tremolo off of the uh, volume pedal, okay, I have it set at MIDI channel 3 for program change 0, which corresponds to uh, essentially turning off the uh, volume control uh, for the, it's, a, it's an empty patch, I say, it turns off the volume control on the Sonus uh, device. Yeah. So that's it. Hope this was helpful to you. Give you some ideas on how to run your rig and uh, get the most out of it. Look for those epic tones, okay? And uh, please subscribe to my channel here for more videos to come. Thanks much. Rock on.